I'm Bishop Patrick Dunn and with Monsignor Brendan Daly, I welcome you to this Mass for the third Sunday of Easter over Anzac weekend this year and of course are still in week four of our pandemic um, shutdown, lockdown. We're celebrating Mass in the chapel in Bishop's House here in Auckland and you're very welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we're conscious always of our need for God's forgiveness, so we pause to reflect on our lives. Lord Jesus, you suffered and died for us and for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came that we might have life in all its fullness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we look forward to your return in glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that, rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men, to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad, and my tongue is exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, Lord you will, you will show, show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. 
O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, Lord you, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night, my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, Lord you, you will show us the path of life. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path to life, abounding joy in your presence the delights at your right hand forever. Lord, you, you will show us the path of life. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Two of the disciples of Jesus were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. He said to them, what matters are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped short, their faces downcast. Then one of them called Cleopas answered him, you must be the only person staying in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have been happening there these last few days. What things, he asked. All about Jesus of Nazareth, they answered, who proved he was a great prophet by the things he said and did in the sight of God and of the whole people, and how our chief priests and our leaders handed him over to be sentenced to death and had him crucified. Our own hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. And this is not all. Two whole days have gone by since it all happened, and some women from our group have astounded us. They went to the tomb in the early morning, and when they did not find the body, they came back to tell us that they had seen a vision of angels who declared he was alive. Some of our friends went to the tomb and found everything exactly as the women had reported, but of him they saw nothing. Then he said to them, You foolish men, so slow to believe the full message of the prophets. Was it not ordained that the Christ should suffer and so enter into his glory? Then starting with Moses and going through all the prophets, he explained to them the passages throughout the scriptures that were about himself. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It's nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. We have just listened to St. Luke's great masterpiece, the encounter of Jesus with Cleopas and his companion on the road to Emmaus on the afternoon of that first Easter Sunday. We've heard the story hundreds of times and it touches us at many levels. We've all had the experience of being so blinded by our own um, hopes and dreams that we fail to consider whether other people, or perhaps even God, has alternative plans. And often in our lives too, we can occasionally, with the gift of hindsight, look back on dark times and recognise only when we look back that perhaps God was walking with us during those times, but we failed to recognise him in the darkness. As our Lord explains the scriptures to Cleopas and his companion, the key clash is between our plans, our dreams, and God's plans. And like Cleopas and his companions, we all have dreams for our lives, and we like God to tag along with us. But what we don't want, what we never want, to have to face or encounter is the mystery of the cross. That's a no-go area. And yet the mystery of the cross is also part of the Easter story. In our Diocese of Auckland, our motto, the motto of the diocese, which dates perhaps from the days of Bishop Pompalia himself, our first bishop, our diocesan motto is in cruce salos, in the cross, salvation. And you remember in the Gospels that our Lord repeatedly says, if you want to find life, take up your cross daily and follow me. The mystery of the cross. Over Anzac weekend, we're very conscious of the sufferings the cross is borne by previous generations. Huge sacrifices made, thousands sacrificed even their own lives, that we might have freedoms that sometimes we can tend to take for granted today. In a similar way, during this coronavirus pandemic, many of us are suffering being locked down. Let's pray that through the restrictions that we're experiencing now, that our nation and our world will one day, and please God soon, be free of this pandemic, which is causing so much suffering at a global level. One of the lessons we've learnt over recent weeks is how fragile human life is. We can tend to think that we're in control, that we've got it all sussed out, and this pandemic has jolted us and perhaps prompted us to realise that life itself is actually a precious gift. The Church's great prayer is the Eucharist. The word means thanksgiving. So as we celebrate this Easter Eucharist, Let's give thanks to God for the gift of life in this world and for the gift of eternal life in the world to come, which is also part of the Easter message. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for our good and for the good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with me, your unworthy servant, with Bishop Michael and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. L Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh 
the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Kia whakapaingi a koutou e te atua kahadawa, te matua me te tamaiti, me te wairua tapu. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.